In this video, we are going to walk you through the Mainblades Flight app. You will learn how to create an account, how to navigate through the inspection history, how to review an inspection and to set up a completely new inspection from scratch. If you're looking for a specific piece of information, you can use the timestamps in the video description so, to quickly let's find jump what right you're looking for. When opening the app for the first time, you will see a short quick guide, highlighting the most important benefits that the Mainblades Flight app has to offer. These are quick setup of new inspections, autonomous flight, complete gallery of all inspection photos, as well as AI supported damage assessment. Once you have clicked through these, we get to the account creation page. If you're a first time user, simply fill in your name, email address, as well as a password and click on the arrow to move on. We have integrated the option to use Google Suite or Office 365 accounts. So in case you're signed up with either of them, you can also just use these credentials as well. Since I already have an account, I can skip this step and go straight to the login. Filling in my details, consisting of email address and password and hitting login. Once you're logged in, the first page you're going to see is the inspection history page, which is one of the three main navigational pages of the app, next to inspection setup, as well as general settings page. These are located at the bottom of the app and can be accessed from any page within the app at any time. On the inspection history page, you can do two main things. One is to go through all inspections that were performed by your engineering team in the past. The second is to start a completely new inspection from scratch, which we will go through at a later point in the video. Okay, so let's have a closer look at an actual inspection and the things you can do here. For that, I'm using the filter, searching for a specific inspection that I would like to review. Let's go with this one for example. Okay, now we're in the inspection page. There's quite a few things here, so let's go through it step by step. On the top left, you can see the aircraft registration number, indicating that you're looking at the correct inspection. A bit below that, you see three subpages, which are inspect, gallery and results. Right now, we are on inspect. We will have a look at the other two in just a moment. Below these, we can see some additional details about this inspection, such as the date and time, as well as the number of photos taken during the inspection. So what can we do on this page? Right now, we are on the inspect page. On this page, we're able to look at the inspection in different ways. One way is a two-dimensional representation of the aircraft, divided into different sections. The sections that were covered by the drone are highlighted in orange. Let me select in this case, for example, the right side of the nose. This brings up the schematic representation of that specific part of the aircraft, the so-called aircraft section diagram. The name of this aircraft part is now shown on the top. In this case, section 1112R. R means that we're looking at the right side of the aircraft. If we want to look at other sections, we can do that either by selecting them from the drop down menu or by swiping to the left and right. Let's go back to the nose section. You notice all these blue dots on the section diagram. Each of these blue dots represents a photo taken by the drone from a specific viewpoint. Let's select this one for example. As we can see, the respective photo now shows in full screen. We can also see that the AI algorithm has detected a damage in this photo, in this case an abrasion. If you want to see more detail, I can zoom in with two fingers to get a good look at that damage. We also have a few other options. I click the photo once, which brings up a menu bar on the top. One option I have here is to review the exact location where this photo was taken. To do that, I click the location button on the top right corner. In this case, I selected the right side of the nose, so it will highlight this area. In order to get back to the previous screen, you simply click on the small white X. Another thing I can do here is to click the blue sidebar icon on the top left to bring up a sidebar. In case the AI algorithm has detected the damage, that damage will show here now. In this case, we see the abrasion from the photo listed here. If I see more damages in the photo that were not catched by the algorithm, I can also manually add them here to the database with a blue plus icon. When I click it, I first have to select the relevant damage type from a drop down menu. Let's select abrasion for example. This will add a new entry on the sidebar. You notice that it also creates a green box. This green box now needs to be resized and moved over the exact position of that damage. To do that, I press and hold this box and drag it over to the damage. 
It helps to zoom into the photo to do this accurately. To adjust the size of the box, I press and hold the four corners and drag them accordingly so that the box is positioned neatly over the damage. Once this is done, I need to have the algorithm compute the exact dimension and location. To do that, I hit the Compute button, which is located at the bottom of the sidebar. After a few moments, the details such as width, length and location on the aircraft section diagram are filled in automatically. It is also possible to manually add the depth of the damage. Let's select for example 2mm for demonstration purposes here. Reviewing the inspection this way adds value to the database, allowing the algorithm to become more intelligent over time. One last feature that is important to highlight here is that it is possible to swipe through all the photos. What that means is you can go up and down, left and right through all the photos, which makes it super easy and intuitive to navigate through all the photos and to review the full inspection this way. Okay, let's go back to the inspect page. To do that, I simply have to click on sections. Alright, let's check out the second way how to review the inspection. On the top left you see the button called Inspect. We click on that, which brings us back to the two-dimensional representation of the aircraft that we have seen before. However, in the top right corner you notice a button called 3D. When we click that button, we get to a page with a 3D model of the aircraft. You notice all these blue dots again. Once again, these dots represent a photo taken by the drone from that specific viewpoint. If we click the photo, we get back to the view that we've seen before, giving us all the same options, such as swiping through the pictures, reviewing the exact location, as well as reviewing the damages and adding damages. Okay, let's go back to the previous screen. And one last thing to note here on this page is that also in this 3D view, we have a drop down menu at the top that allows us to jump to the specific section diagrams right away. Also here, we can navigate through them by swiping to the left and to the right. Alright, now where we have this clear, let's move on to the second subpage, the gallery page. Like the name suggests, this page shows a full gallery of all pictures that were taken during the inspection. As we can see on the top of the screen, the total number of photos is 339. Next to this, we see a button called Pending Review. Photos that were not yet reviewed by the engineer are showing up in this screen. We have the option here to apply two filters. These can be accessed via the filter button on the top right of the screen. With this filter, we can filter for two things. One is the sections filter, which lets you select from all aircraft sections. These are the same ones that we have just seen in the drop down menu of the inspect page. The other one is the findings filter, which allows you to filter based on all possible damages found during the drone inspection, such as abrasions, cracks and dents. Let me for example select the damage type scratch. As you can see, it is now showing me only one photo, because there is only this one photo from this inspection that contains a scratch. When clicking the photo, we get the familiar page that we have seen before. Alright, let me go back. The third and last subpage of the inspection page is results. As the name suggests, on this page all results, so all damages recognized by the drone are summarized. You can see this as the final inspection report. On top, we see the currently reviewed aircraft section diagram, in this case the right side of the nose. Once again, from the drop-down menu we can choose different sections, but we can also swipe to left and right to navigate through all diagrams. So let's have a look again at the nose part. We can now see that a total of 22 pictures have been taken of this part of the aircraft. Across these 22 pictures, a total of 10 damages have been detected, including two different damage types. These are highlighted with red small squares overlaid on the section diagram. When I click on one of these red squares, you notice that the screen shifts downwards. And here we have a full list of all detected damages, highlighting with a small blinking animation the one that I just clicked on. Here we can find a few detailed information about this damage, such as a reference number, the photo ID, the type of damage, its dimensions in millimeter, its location on the aircraft in the stations and stringers format, as well as its status. It's important to note that the photos labeled with the word pending still require a review by the engineer. If I select one of the photos, we get forwarded to the screen that we have seen a few times now, giving us all the same options. Okay, now where we have this covered, let's move over and have a look on how to actually initialize a new drone inspection from scratch. To do that, click on History at the bottom of the app. 
This brings us back to the inspection history page. In the top right corner, you can see a big orange button with the name New Inspection. Clicking it brings us to the asset registration page. Here we first have to select the aircraft which we are going to inspect. All aircraft are listed here with their official registration number. Once we have selected the correct aircraft we want to inspect, we can move on to the next step, which is the flight path. Here we can select from various options, such as the wings, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, as well as the fuselage. Let me select the wing here for now. In the next step, we have to select the location of the inspection. There are only two options here. One is outdoor, so at the apron, as well as indoor, so inside of the hangar. For now, let's select outdoor. The fourth and last step is the drone setup. Here we have to select the drone home area. The home area is the area around the aircraft from which the drone is going to take off to perform the inspection. It is also the area to which it will return for battery swaps as well as once the operation is completed. It is important to actually place the drone in this area that you have selected here. Once we have filled this in, we can hit start pre-flight checklist. In the following screen, the app performs an automated pre-flight checklist, checking vital functionalities of the system. This takes a few seconds and is performed automatically once you enter the screen. Once the pre-flight checklist has been successful, key information about the upcoming inspection becomes available on the left side of the screen. This includes the estimated flight time, the number of batteries required, as well as the total amount of images. With this being fully set up, you are ready to hit takeoff and perform the automated drone inspection. In that moment, the screen will switch to the live view and the drone will take off from its designated home area. The live feed of the camera is covering the biggest part of this screen. At the top of the screen, a couple of key insights about the ongoing operation are displayed. On the left, you can see a green ISAC flight icon which indicates that the connection to the ISAC module is active and that the automated inspection is in progress. To the right of that, we see three icons that indicate the signal strength of the GPS, of the controller, as well as that of the video transmission feed. Next to this, there are three more icons indicating the battery level of the controller, the temperature of the drone, as well as the battery level of the drone. Below these indicators, the remaining time of the inspection is shown, as well as how many pictures have already been taken so far. Below this, you can find a brightness level button. With this button, you can adjust the brightness level of both the live feed, as well as that of the actual inspection photos. In case of an unexpected event, or in case of an emergency, a flight abort button is available to the left of the screen. Pushing this button will ensure an immediate, safe landing of the drone. Below this, we have an animation which shows constantly where the drone is with respect to the aircraft in order to support the drone operator during the flight. Lastly, information about the current altitude of the drone as well as its distance to the aircraft are highlighted at the bottom of the screen. And there you have it, the complete walkthrough of the Mainblades flight app. If you have any questions or you would like to receive any additional information, please visit support.mainblades.com. Thank you for watching.